Hey everyone, it's Liz from Thrust Flight. I'm the Chief Flight Instructor here, and today we're gonna talk about the Power Off Stall. We'll be flying a Cessna 172, as well as Common Air students make. At a full stall, go ahead and recover. Full power. Full power, good. All right, Lan, uh, so next what we're gonna do is a power off stall. So we're gonna start with the pre-maneuver checklist. Six, six, uh, we just completed final that here, so we're gonna go into the maneuver Final setup traffic, next. Uh, okay. Left downwind, so, one eight, full stop, kind of holding 2,500 feet, you've got an easterly heading, yeah, and we're gonna pick a good okay, visual so reference. Clear, you see yeah, that like yeah, really yeah, bright yeah, gold yeah, area. Uh, it looks like maybe a water tower six, building ahead of us. That way we know something that we're aiming at and we can divide our tension inside outside appropriately. Okay, so first step here is I want you to make sure you're tripped out in good level flight before we actually begin the maneuver. How's it feel? Good. I'm a little bit below 2,500, so let me get back up there for a second. Okay. All right, I'm trimmed out. All right. So we're going to reduce your RPMs to 1,700. And the nose is going to feel heavy, so you apply some back pressure to keep the altitude. Trim it out if you're feeling a lot of resistance. Okay. So we're just going to hold 2,500 feet on the altitude. Good. Okay. Go ahead and put in the first notch flaps here since we're below the deployment speed. First notch. In. Good. And you feel it trying to climb, yep. so you're going to be pressing forward a little bit, just holding that altitude. Okay. Great. Go ahead and put in the second notch flaps. Second in. Looking really good. Okay, go ahead and put the last notch flaps. Last notch. So what we're simulating is we are coming in for a landing, right? Uh, so we're going to set up just like that. Go ahead and lower the nose. It's like we're coming in on final approach. We already have full flaps, like we were coming in for a landing. And we've got typical RPM setting, typical airspeed for a landing. You're at roughly 65 knots, and we've got about 1,700 RPMs, okay? So very similar to actual final approach for a runway, okay? So now what we're going to say is that we're going to uh, flare too high for our runway, and it's going to bring us to a stall condition. So go ahead and pull the RPMs to idle, and then I want you to raise the nose to the horizon like we were flaring for our landing but we did it too early right so airspeed's gonna bleed you're gonna continue applying back pressure we'll look for the stall indications there's a stall warning horn go a little bit further for me there's this angle of attack indicator and we should get some buffeting after that there's buffeting and a full stall go ahead and recover full power full power good bringing the nose to the horizon as we're accelerating bring flaps to 20 degrees 20 Good. Nose is getting heavy, trim it out. Okay, bring flaps to 10. Flaps to 10. Excellent, and we can reestablish the climb now. We've got enough airspeed. We don't want to be coming down towards the ground if this happened on a landing. And bring flaps to zero. Flaps to zero. Really good work there. Continue our climb back up to 2,000 feet here. Okay. Or 2,500, slip okay. of the time. 2,500 feet here. 2,500. Good. And on this climb, what we can really do to minimize our altitude loss, right, is climb out at VX or VY. That's not something I pointed out too abruptly in the maneuver uh, because you're already initiating the recovery, but there's no reason why we can't do it at that slow of an airspeed, right? I see a lot of students leveling off to 90 knots, right, before they even begin a climb. But yeah. if you're close to the ground, not what you'd want to do. Yeah. Climb out as quickly and as efficiently, efficiently as possible. Yeah, great performance. All right, now that you've seen the power off stall maneuver, let's break it down and talk about the common errors. All right, Lance, uh, so next what we're gonna do is a power off stall. So we're gonna start with the pre-maneuver checklist. Uh, we just completed that here, so we're gonna go into the maneuver setup next. Okay. So that's right off the bat, one of the places students make mistakes all the time when performing this maneuver is they don't start with clearing turns. So at our school, we have what's called a pre-maneuver checklist and we perform clearing turns as part of that. Your school may have a different procedure or maybe you've got a memorized acronym to help you start, but this maneuver needs to start with clearing turns just like all of your high altitude performance maneuvers. Holding 2,500 feet, you've got an easterly heading, and we're gonna pick a good visual reference. If you see that like really bright gold area, uh, it looks like maybe a water tower building ahead of us. That way we know something that we're aiming at and we can divide our tension inside outside appropriately. Okay, so this is another place where I see students fail to set up properly in the maneuver is picking an outside visual reference. Uh, we call new pilots children of the magenta because they only fly GPS. It's also because you only look inside. So we really wanna make sure that we're still looking outside as part of our maneuver setup. Uh, the other thing is the altitude we start at. If you heard me mention, we're starting at 2,000 
1,500 feet. That's an MSL altitude or above sea level. This maneuver requires that we start at 1,500 feet above ground level. So make sure you're not too low before beginning. Okay, so first step here is I want you to make sure you're tripped out in good level flight before we actually begin the maneuver. How's it feel? Good, I'm a little bit below 2,500, so let me get back up there for a second. Okay. All right, I'm trimmed out. Okay, so this is really important. Take all the time you need to set up the maneuver. The examiner will wait on you. There's not a rush to perform the maneuver, but it's important that I'm fully established and trimmed. Uh, everything is smooth before I begin. If I'm coming off a climb or a descent, it's just gonna make the maneuver that much more difficult. All right, so we're gonna reduce your RPMs to 1,700. And the nose is going to feel heavy, so you apply some back pressure to keep the altitude. Trim it out if you're feeling a lot of resistance. Huh? So we're just going to hold 2,500 feet on the altitude. Good. Okay. Go ahead and put in the first notch flaps here since we're below the deployment speed. First notch. In. Okay. So Lan is just about to deploy the flaps, and I want you to watch his hands, how he's uh, pushing forward on the elevator to counteract that pitching moment. He puts the flaps in, and he's pushing forward to counteract their lifting motion. First notch, in. Good, you feel it trying to climb, so you're gonna be pressing forward a little bit, just holding that altitude. Okay, great, go ahead and put in the second notch flaps. Looking really good. Okay, go ahead and put the last notch flaps. Last notch. So what we're simulating is we're coming in for a landing, right? Uh, so we're gonna set up just like that. Go ahead and lower the nose. It's like we're coming in on final approach. We already have full flaps, like we were coming in for a landing. And we've got typical RPM setting, typical airspeed for a landing. You're at roughly 65 knots, and we've got about 1,700 RPMs, okay? So very similar to actual final approach for a runway, okay? So now what we're gonna say is that we're gonna uh, flare too high for our runway, and it's gonna bring us to a stall condition. So go ahead and pull the RPMs to idle, and then I want you to raise the nose to the horizon like we were flaring for our landing but we did it too early okay so right here i was really specific with my language i said bring the nose to the horizon because we're going to induce a stall with it uh, i have students when they try and perform this maneuver for the first time or two they try and really pitch the nose up aggressively we don't need to do that we're trying to give you a realistic scenario of how pilots do this when they come in for landing so just bringing the nose to the horizon is all you need so airspeed's gonna bleed. You're gonna continue applying back pressure. We'll look for the stall indications. There's a stall warning horn. Go a little bit further for me. There's this angle of attack indicator, and we should get some buffeting after that. There's buffeting and a full stall. Go ahead and recover. Full power. Full power. Okay, let's stop right there and talk about the difference between a full stall and a stall indication. So in the ACS standards for this maneuver, what your examiner is going to hold you to when you take your test, right? There's two things we need to be aware of. For the private pilot, it says that you recognize the impending stall signs and that you recover promptly after a full stall has occurred. So what is a full stall, right? Um, a stall is when my aircraft is no longer producing enough lift to stay airborne, right? So that would mean my nose could still be up in the air, but that my aircraft would be descending towards the earth. So one instrument that gives that away immediately is my VSI. If I'm pointed up like this, I've got lots of back pressure in, we were climbing just a few seconds ago, and now I've got a negative VSI, or I'm showing a descent on my flight instruments, I'm fully stalled. Another indication could be I'm, again, approaching the stall, I've got the nose really high, we're climbing, we're climbing, and then the nose uncommanded drops forward like this, that would also be a full stall. Uh, we call it a nose break, but sometimes those two things happen simultaneously. Sometimes I'll have a descent like that and the nose has not broke or dipped over. Um, sometimes I'll have the nose break and I haven't seen a negative VSI yet. So any one of those I'm looking for as the sign of a full stall. Um, the other things I listed on the way, right? A stall warning horn, angle of attack indicator, which made a slightly different noise, or buffeting are all signs of an impending stall. They're not a sign of a full stall. So for the private pilot, I don't want to recover at those. I want to wait till I get to the full stall. For the commercial pilot, it's a little bit different. Um, they have the option in their ACS. It says that the examiner's discretion, the student will either recover at the first indication of a stall. So what we talked about, stall warning horn, angle of attack indicator, buffeting, whichever one happens first, or at the full stall. So you just need to communicate with your examiner on which one they're looking for you to recover at if you're the commercial pilot. Bringing the nose to the horizon as we're accelerating, bring flaps to 20 degrees. 20. Okay, so right here is another place where students make a mistake. 
I have just started my recovery from the power off stall, right? I put in full power and I'm starting to level off so that I'm not descending anymore. My airplane's accelerating, but I'm not far away from my stall speed. I don't wanna enter another stall. So I need to make sure that I only take out one notch of flaps at a time. Uh, the other error I see is students will leave all the flaps in and we're trying to accelerate, we're trying to get out of this stalled condition, uh, but with all the flaps in, it's pretty hard to do. That's a lot of drag to still be maneuvering with. So take out the flaps early and only one notch at a time. Pretty much as soon as I go full power in a 172, I can take out the first notch flaps from 30 degrees to 20 degrees. Good. Nose is getting heavy, trimming out. Okay, bring flaps to 10. Flaps to 10. Excellent, and we can reestablish climb now. We've got enough airspeed. We don't want to be coming down towards the ground if this happened on a landing and bring flaps to zero. Flaps to zero. Okay, so on the climb, right, in our, again, ACS standards, what the examiners are gonna hold you to on your check ride, uh, we've just come out of a stall, right? So we were nose high, the aircraft stalled, and now we're trying to reestablish a climb. If this truly happened close to the ground for a landing, then we wouldn't wanna be pointed down. I don't wanna be getting closer to the ground or the runway. I'd wanna be reestablishing that climb. So they specifically say in both the private pilot and the commercial ACS that I need to accelerate to VX or V why for my climb. Typically students get way faster than that. We're almost at cruise speed and then they start climbing out. So make sure that you're watching to reestablish that climb. We don't want to get closer to the ground. I know sometimes it's hard when we're simulating at altitude. So we have to keep in mind, where does this really happen to pilots? And what would I be doing? I don't want to get closer to the ground. I want to be climbing. Really good work there. Continue our climb back up to 2000 feet here. Okay or 2,500, slip of the tongue. 2,500 feet here. 1,500. Good, and on this climb, what we can really do to minimize our altitude loss, right, is climb out at VX or VY. That's not something I pointed out too abruptly in the maneuver uh, because you're already initiating the recovery, but there's no reason why we can't do it at that slow of an airspeed, right? I see a lot of students leveling off to 90 knots, right, before they even begin a climb. But yeah. if you're close to the ground, not what you'd want to do. So I just said the same thing in the video that I just told you. If you hear it twice, you know it's important. Climb out as quickly and as efficiently, efficiently as possible. Yeah, great performance. Okay, so there's just a few other things that I wanna tie up with you here at the end of the video that we didn't point out specifically while flying it. The first one is coordination. If we look at our aircraft as I'm approaching this stall, it's really similar to slow flight. My nose is high and I've got a lot of those left turning tendencies acting on the aircraft. So I wanna make sure that I'm adding right rudder when I'm in this nose high configuration to stay coordinated. As this full stall occurs, right, I'm gonna to need to adjust the rudder and establish a climb. I'm, I'll need more rudder again there. So you're kind of actively working on the rudder to keep coordinated the whole time through the stall maneuver. The next thing I wanna share with you about the power off stall maneuver is the rest of the standards in the ACS. Uh, it says that this stall can be performed either straight ahead or banking. We showed you a demonstration of a straight ahead stall today. So it's got requirements on the heading. Uh, it's gonna be plus or minus 10 degrees for heading. And I also could perform this stall in a bank, like I mentioned. Uh, so the standards differ there a little bit for private and commercial. For the private pilot, they say that you shouldn't exceed 20 degrees bank when performing the banking stall and that you have to stay within 10 degrees of that. So plus or minus 10 from 20 degrees max. Uh, for the commercial pilot, same thing. We don't want to exceed 20 degrees bank, but you get a five degree window plus five minus five. So a little bit more stringent. Okay, that wraps up our video today on the power off stall. If you have a question, leave us a comment and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos.